So I tell people, if you want the long-lasting happiness, let us focus more on rearranging the internals, not the externals. That's one very important point. Most of the time, especially in the so-called developed countries, people spend so much time rearranging the externals. You marry somebody, and this wife, this husband doesn't work, then you think, okay, change it. Get... <laughs> that also didn't work, then go for the third one. So in this way, you keep on changing your husband, changing your wife, changing your car, changing your house, thinking that by changing and rearranging the externals, you are going to get the long-lasting happiness. My dear friends, that has never worked and never will work. So therefore, the long-lasting happiness has to come from within oneself. In terms of ex external appliances, like gadgets, we are very good in updating iPhone 4, old, go for 5, 6, 7, 8, now 9, 10, right? iPhone 10, keep on updating. Tell me, when was the last time when you updated yourself? The problem is because when we talk about mind, it is a non-physical, colorless, shapeless entity. And human beings have this tendency to take into consideration of only what you can see, what you can touch, what you can hear, and forget the rest. Much of the problem that you see today in the world it's a clear indication of starvation of the mind. Starvation, I'm saying. I use the word updating the mind. Similarly, I can use the word starvation of the mind. For our body, how many times you feed your body? Breakfast, lunch, dinner, and then in between Kit Kat, whatever, you know? So many things, right? But for, for the mind, what kind of food you are giving? Be honest. Nothing. That's why in terms of the whole education system, it is important to have a clear understanding that education is not just literacy. It's not being able to read, write, and do a mathematical calculation. It's for human flourishment. That human flourishment will come by understanding the way things are, understanding the nature, understanding the reality, and adapting your mind, accepting that mind, changing your mind in accordance with that reality. So that's why you hear in the Buddhist philosophy, constantly the teachings or impermanent suffering, interdependent origination, emptiness, and so forth, which may be, you know, at a first glance, you think, oh, what, what are these? They're so difficult, you know? But they are, they are nothing but talking about the reality. Impermanence is not made by Buddha. It is the way things are. Things are changing. So therefore, when we talk about getting happiness or long-lasting happiness, we are talking about how can we get happiness from the changing world, the changing situations. How can we get, get happiness from uncertain situations, uncertain world? Everything is changing. And that understanding of impermanence or, you know, uh, the fleeting reality or uncertainty, is so, so, so important. That is why in Buddhism, you are, you are encouraged to think about these realities, realities of inter, interconnected reality. You cannot survive, not only your dependence on others, but look at your own psychophysical aggregate. Each part of your body is dependent on the other parts. So therefore, there is a holistic process of dealing with all the problems, sickness or your attitude and so many things. It's not like in the West, where there is a, what we call a specialization. The so-called special, specialization has many advantages also, but many demerits also. So in, in Buddhism, whether it's the Buddhist you know, philosophy or the medicine, there is a holistic approach. So similarly, in our process of dealing with our sufferings, our problems, our difficulties, your, your mental outlook, your perspective is extremely, extremely important. Your happiness, your peace, your suffering is in your hand. Therefore, do not cheat yourself. Look at this. Of course, you will say, who, who is there who will cheat himself or herself? But because of not doing what we should be doing, we are cheating ourselves all the time. That's the meaning of cheating, right? So therefore, your, your mental perspective in accordance with the reality is extremely, extremely crucial. Because at the end of the day, in the true sense of the term, nobody can help you. This is the bitter truth. Your relatives, your friends, you may have very good you know, parents or relatives and so forth. How much they can do for you? For example, during this visit to Dharamsala, did you bring all your relatives with you? Did you bring all your wealth and money and property, everything with you? You cannot. Not only that, not, not only that, when you take a flight, say, from Delhi to Dharamsala, you are allowed to carry only 15 kilos. And if you carry more than that, they'll say, Madam, sorry, excess baggage, you have to pay more. But the Buddha has been teaching this for a long time. He said, the things that you are collecting, the things that you are collecting, because of your desire, because you agreed things you are collecting, these are all excess baggage. The Buddha said this a long time back, and nobody listened. Now the airlines are telling you, and you, you are not only following their, you know, uh, new rule, but, but you are also ready to pay all the excess money, 300, 400 rupees per kilo or whatever, you see. 
There's the thing, there's the thing. If you, if you don't pay attention to the reality, if you pretend that it is not existing, your, your being like pretending will not do away with that reality. Reality will stare right in your face sooner or later. So therefore, this process of maintaining happiness individually in terms of society, in terms of international you know, relationships, whatever, happiness is the most important thing that we have to have. And that has to be cultivated from within oneself by changing one's attitude and there should be a kind of acceptance.